We'll begin this thread by looking at the actual example that's given in the standard or something very close to it. Given the rule add 3 and the starting number 1, generate terms in the resulting sequence and observe whether they are odd or even and then explain informally why this pattern occurs. The strategy that we'll use for this is to use unit chips and look at things visually. Before we get started though, there's a little vocabulary that I want to introduce and make sure you understand. And These are words that students also should learn and understand. The word parity indicates whether a number is odd or even. It, it comes from the Latin, same Latin root as the word pair or two of a kind. Um, and so when we say 13 has odd parity, it's because it doesn't, it can't be grouped into pairs. 16 has even parity. So whether a number is odd or even is, is indicated by its parity. The other word to know is increment, which is an amount that's repeatedly added or subtracted to another amount. So in this example, we're adding 3 each time we move to a new number. So the increment is 3. Incremental mean, means uh, bigger by a little amount, by, by a certain amount. Okay, so we'll begin by generating the sequence with a starting number of 1. Here's 1. And the rule is add 3, so our next term is going to be 1 plus 3. It's going to look like that. We can continue. The next term is 1 plus 3 plus 3, and 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And those are our terms. And one can count, of course, the values, uh, the number of units, and, and end up with the numbers 1, 4, 7, and 10. We're going to see this kind of pattern a lot as we move forward. It's a linear pattern, and so it's a good time to introduce students to the idea of adding the same number each time to a given starting number. So what we're looking for here is uh, the pattern of odd and even. We're looking about to, at the parity of these numbers, and what we see is that the numbers in the sequence alternate between odd and even parity. One, 4, 7 is odd, 10 is even, the next number will be odd. And we're trying to help students really understand and be able to explain why this is so. Well, the reason has to do with the fact that the increment is odd. And when we add an odd number, an odd number is made up of some number of twos plus an extra one. So um, an odd number, when you add it, you're going to add the number of twos, however many twos, and each time you add two, the parity will not change. So if I took one and I add two, I'm going to skip two and get to three, and I'm going to stay on the odd numbers. So adding the groups of twos, no matter how many groups of twos I add, the parity will not change. But then when I add that extra one, this the third one, because my increment is three, that will change the parity. It's the extra one in the odd number that changes the parity back and forth between odd and even. As an extension, let's ask a couple of questions. What would happen if the first number were even? Does that change anything? Well, imagine that we had two here, and we're still adding, if we're adding an odd number, then we would still be changing the parity because you're, you would be moving from an odd to an even. And this goes back to the idea earlier in, in the unit where we have learned that adding an odd and an even number creates an odd number. Adding an odd and an odd number creates an even number. So if the first number is even, nothing's going to change except that instead of going from odd, even, odd, even, we would change and we go even, odd, even, odd. We'd have 2, 5, 8, and 11. But if the increment is even, if we were changing the, the uh, 3 to a 2, then, or, or to a 4 or a 6 for that matter, then when we add an even number, we're not going to change the parity. One plus 2 gives me 3, and then we'll have 5, then 7, then 9. We'll have an ongoing pattern where everything is staying odd. And this is because we're skipping over the even numbers when we jump from 1 to 3. We're skipping over that in, in intermediate 